médias. Le monde, c'est nous. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this second weekly edition of uh, Views on the Continent. In West Africa, persistent insecurity, terrorism and constitutional disorder in the continent has prompted West African leaders to take the bull to to decide to take the bull by the horn at a summit in nigeria ECOWAS president omar aliu Toure said leaders of the economic community of west african states have decided to take their own security into their hands they are determined to establish a regional force that will intervene in the event of need in the areas of jihadism terrorism or non-respect of constitutional law as witnessed by countries like mali burkina faso and niger likewise southwards to the gulf of guinea which have all been hit by military coups in the last two years national armies largely powerless against the jihadist forces operating across borders have been cooperating with external actors such as the united nations france and russia however the effort isn't good enough according to ECOWAS president and ECOWAS leaders this decision to take the security of their region into their own hands is an important one as it will help to restructure the region's security architecture the decision by these uh, West African leaders to take uh, the security of their region into their hands is what we shall be analyzing in today's edition of Views on the Continent, somewhat saying uh, taking or having uh, African solutions to African problems. Dear televiewers, this is Views on the Continent. Stay with us. <laughs> It is always a pleasure to know you're trusting your Pan-African television, 14 hours GMT, 15 o'clock local time. This is Views on the Continent. In security in West Africa, West African leaders have decided to take the bull by the horn and have to take responsibilities of the security of the West African region into their hands. We take note of countries like Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, Niger, and uh, also Guinea, which have been countries that have followed uh, uh, constitutional the non-respect of constitutional law within the past two years. These countries have been faced with coup d'etats, and uh, there is still a lot of instability in some of uh, these countries so at this point in time these leaders have said it is important for the region to restructure security architecture it is a quite brilliant a decision as held by many analysts and security experts equally how far this is going to take them and uh, the benefits of this decision by West African leaders is what we shall be analyzing in today's edition of views on the continent there are a lot of things that need to be elaborated as to how they are going to go about it however the security of the african continent and the west african region is what we shall be tabling in today's edition of views on the continent your one hour interactive program we are glad to have on our panel this afternoon a political analyst in the person of mbofu javans thank you for honoring this invitation this day Thank you very much, uh, Richard. Good afternoon, televiewers of African Media. It's once more a pleasure sharing the platform with you as we look together into the decisions and the policies that are arising from the West African Economic Community of uh, States so that, uh, and how it will advance the continent of Africa and that particular block, of course. Of course, it's very important. Thank you very much, Mr. Mbofum, for honoring this invitation. Let's equally go into let's equally go to Nigeria and join Mr. Confidence Mark Harry. He's a security expert with the SBM uh, Intelligence of Lagos. Thanks for honoring. 
All right, uh, Mr. Confidence, let me start with you already. This is a security issue and looking at these uh, security uh, situation already uh, uh, in Nigeria. First of all, we have a confirmation that the report is ready. So before I get to you, Mr. Confidence, let's take a listen to this report that gives us uh, uh, more insight on uh, this story. Then we'll be back to the studio for more analysis. West African leaders said on Sunday that they would establish a peacekeeping force that could intervene to restore constitutional order in a region that has seen several coups in the last two years. The Economic Community of West African States was holding its annual summit in Nigeria's capital Abuja. A communique after the meeting said leaders want to recalibrate our security architecture to ensure that we take care of our own security. Here's ECOWAS President Omar Aliyu Toure. The, the leaders are determined to establish a regional force that will intervene in the event of need, whether this is against terrorism or to restore constitutional order in member countries. ECOWAS said defense chiefs would meet next month to work out how the force would operate. Toure also added that ECOWAS leaders would ensure that the transition stays on course in Mali, Burkina Faso and Guinea, countries that have all witnessed coups in the past two years. There is no exception to the return to, civil, to, to democracy as agreed in the transition time frame, in the transition agreement with ECOWAS. Leaders also expressed concern over the continued detention of 46 Ivorian soldiers in Mali. They asked Malian authorities to release the soldiers by the end of this month, adding that they reserve the right to take certain measures. Earlier on Sunday, Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari led a groundbreaking ceremony for a new ECOWAS headquarters in Abuja. Thank you very much for that uh, report. Getting back to the studio, let me uh, have uh, let me start with you, Bofung Javans. Mr. Bofung, uh, Director, let's start with Bofung already. So, Mr. Mbofo, we are looking at this brilliant decision uh, uh, by West African leaders to take their own security into their hands. And uh, it has been healed by many like, oh, wow, this comes at a time where it is most needed. However, some are like, is this going to be effective? How did you welcome this decision by these ECOWAS leaders? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've always said that in Africa, we have very logical initiatives, very wonderful initiatives. We put them in place. And uh, our biggest problem as Africans has never been to develop initiatives or come up with such structures. But our biggest problems have always been into the, in the, in the, uh, with the implementation of such structures. Mm -hmm. Right now, yes, such a body has been, has been put in place. If we listen to the man, Turi, he has stated that there is time for them to take over their, their security or to hand over or to take charge of the security in the economic community of West African states. But now the problem is that, yes, as the initiative is laudable, how do they intend to go about it? Is it just because the interests of some people are being uh, maybe threatened, or is it actually because the territorial integrity and the interests of the citizens in general are being threatened? Because this, um, if we are talking about the jihadist movement that is robbing Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, and south of the Gulf, it did not start today. It has started a long time ago, or it did not start just two years ago. What we noticed in this region, in this block some two years ago, was a coup in Mali, was a coup in Guinea, was a coup in Burkina Faso. The question I tend to ask myself is that, why is it that before, when the jihadist movement has been taking place in these regions, they did not see a reason 
for a cons for, for a block force or maybe to, for to, to augment security in the in the region but they just waited now that they are battling with um with with coup the tars they are, they are thinking or maybe they think it's time for them to 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 maybe take charge of their security so when you want to look at it from that angle you would tend to think that the problem is not actually to address the the jihadist uh, threat which is what is actually posing the biggest security in this region but now it's to protect the interests of uh, of uh, those that are democratically elected irrespective of the fact that they might go against the constitution because we have always said that in africa the biggest problem we have had is not the coup or is not the removal of a of an elect uh, a democratically elected leader but the greatest coups africans have had has been the coups that democratically elected leaders go against the constitution and they consider that it is the will of the of the people which is a bigger problem so we believe that yes it is time for africa it has always been time for Africa to take charge of their security. It has always been time for Africa to take charge of their affairs, to sit at the end of their affairs. But now, how we go about it, how we intend to manage it, it all is of ultimate, ultimate importance because most often than not, we will set better rules, wonderful rules, but when it goes to the level of implementation, it is only aimed at protecting the interests of a selected few, which hide in the disguise of elected leaders. So we hope that what is happening in ECOWAS might turn out to produce results that will put the African uh, continent on the limelight of positivity. Thank you very much, Mr. Javans, for your take. Let me get from you, uh, Mr. Confidence McHarry. Uh, this is quite an, a laudable decision by these West African leaders as an expert in this security domain. What do, what do you think about this? How much you describe the airport as a tool? You know, um, listening to you from the very beginning of this program, you use uh, kind of, I, I, should I say, positive words of endearment to the development. So I like to believe that you think uh, to an extent that this is a welcome development. I, I beg to disagree. I, I vastly differ from the from the initiative to begin with. Um, there's a proverb in Nigerian pidgin that says that uh, you don't look for a black goat in the middle of the night. Um, you should look for a black goat during the day where it is much more possible to find the goat. Uh, you know. So what ECOWAS is presently doing is akin to looking for a black goat in the middle of the night. And I explained how. Uh, since the since the 2020 coup in Mali, we, I have written a series of uh, opinion pieces personally and institution-wide that's within the capacity of an organization of intelligence. And we have um, looked at the problem, uh, you know, basically. So one of the key things or key reasons that got us here in the first place is that we, or ECOWAS is trying to link uh, the, the creation of an anti coup force, rather, uh, in the manner of speaking, to stop coup in the region is simply because of the underlying issues, such as, as my colleague here has mentioned, lack of respect for constitutional norms, as well as chiefly the inability of democratically elected leaders in the region to do the right thing by providing. Uh, better security, improvement of, of, of economic opportunities for their leaders, and improving upon the economy. You know, so a lot of these issues have not translated into better improvement in the lives of streets of people. If you look at um, the West African region in the whole, Nigeria has the worst child mortality rates in the world. If you also look at Mali, well, some of the worst out of school uh, child, uh, child out of school population is in that country. So Nigeria currently, as at last week, the, the, the country recorded about 133 million people in multi-dimensional poverty. This is not some NGO that's screened this because this is from the National Bureau of Statistics. So what I am basically saying is that even if you look at Ghana right now, Ghana is also going through it as well through economic turmoil. The point is, how did the West African sub-region get to this level that it requires a coup force to stop the coup? It simply is because the leaders in the region failed to take responsibility by 
improving the lives of the people. And as a result, whenever coups happen, people trip out on the streets to welcome the soldiers. We saw the same thing happen in Guinea. We saw the same thing happen in Mali. We've seen the same thing happen in Burkina Faso all over again. So while people in the first place would be rejoicing that ECOWAS leaders want to take matters into their own hands, you know, by sending a coup force, you know, to stop coup, the question we should be asking ourselves is that is this really what is needed at this point? Because in the first place, there are reasons why the region descended into the coup belt of the African continent. And these, these issues have not been addressed. I've already mentioned some of them. And a key reason why I would it was culpable is that they often overlook when their colleagues in other countries violate the constitution. It is written in not just ECOWAS chapter, but even the OAU chapter that created the African Union, the concept of non interference and sovereignty. This concept has been respected so much so to the detriment of these four countries that ECOWAS would rather sit tight and watch an Alpha Kondi or an Alassan Ouattara in Ivory Coast run for a third state in direct violation of the constitution. I would rather not do anything but want to send mediators to, to tell who are uh, to return the civilian, a, civilian a, a democratic leader back to power. It simply does not work that way. So ECOWAS has simply failed to take responsibility for its action and the solution it is touting now will absolutely not solve the problem and has no key into it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Confidence, for that take. Now, you're, you, from your own point of view, like you said, you're not in total accord with the decision or it's not totally laudable to you. So, we, we, not, we have ever not, seen the ECOWAS. Can you hear me? So, uh, we have ever seen the ECOWAS uh, having suspended these uh, three nations, particularly Mali, Burkina Faso, and uh, 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 we we talk of Mali, Burkina Faso, and is it Niger, which had uh, some coup d'etats, Guinea rather, which carried out some coup d'etats. They have been suspended from the decision-making bodies of the ECOWAS. Already at that level, can we say there are already uh, the different methods of approach which the ECOWAS started to sanction these uh, concerned uh, countries that have gone against constitutional rule of law? Mr. Confidence. Yes. Can you hear me? Hello, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Hello, is there? All right. Mr. Confidence, you can speak. I can hear you. Okay, can you please repeat your question? I don't get your question. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You can go on. I can hear you. Yes, yes. Before the line went blank, I was asking you to repeat your question because I don't exactly get the question. of this decision on your own point of view not being quite laudable however we can see already the ECOWAS which started on a firm stance uh, by suspending uh, 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 Mali, Burkina Faso and Guinea from uh, the, the decision making bodies of uh, the ECOWAS is that not already a laudable step to see show that this regional governing body is already working towards uh, bringing uh, 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 restoring peace in those parts of the country. All right. I'll, before I answer that question, I will tell you a story that's a developing life right now. You know, in the European Union, as, as, it, as, as it stands now, the European Union is currently withholding up to eighteen billion dollars in border share allocation to Hungary, and and the reason is because of some of its laws, you know, uh, that the Hungarian Parliament passed and of course with the approval of the President Viktor Orban. Some of these laws directly target uh, the, the justice system in Hungary, it also targets human rights, and the same thing with Poland. You know, it, it simply is called democratic backsliding. Uh, the, the jerk is this. These two countries <clears throat> have been engaging in constitutional acts that tamper with their constitution, uh, you know, in 
ways that would not only be inimical to European Union values and ideologies, but to also target human rights and you know uh, the rule of law, justice, and other things in the country. So what the EU basically did is that um, it decided to hold budgetary allocation at the for Poland. It decided that its COVID-19 recovery fund is going to hold it until Poland and repeal some of the aspects of the new law it has, it has put in place. Why is this important? As I've said earlier, it is better for you to look for a black vote during the day. ECOWAS has not lived up to its, its reputation. It started off as an economic community. And over the years and over in my lifetime, I've seen it translate into a political community. Right now, it is trying to translate into a spiritual community it translated to in 1981 when it set up the ECOWAS monitoring group. So the point is this. There were attempts at democratic backsliding in places like Guinea, in places like Ivory Coast, in places like Burkina Faso. There were so many of them. In not a single instance did ECOWAS react to some of the unconstitutional attempts at presidents in this country to run for a third state. In the Gambia right now, there are so many human rights violations and constitutional violations that are going on in the government of Adam Aparo. We are seeing the same thing happening in Liberia. Uh, the civil society groups are complaining about President George West's actions. Not a single word has been uttered by ECOWAS, but if a coup is to take place today in these countries that have not experienced a coup, we are going to see ECOWAS up and about an activity trying to restore the ousted democratic government. And I'm saying that this is not how it is supposed to be. So if ECOWAS is trying to transition from an economic community of how it was built in, in May 1971, in 1975 rather, to a security community or a political one, it has to not only take its charter to advocate for these new changes, it also has to be seen as a prosperity, excluding offending states from the highest decision making bodies in the organization. It's simply not going to stop coup plotters. It is not going to do anything. Sanctioning them, if trying to sanction Mali, not only has Mali grown stronger in its defiance to echo the international community, it is trying to gain new friends in the East. It hasn't stopped the coup. The coup is alive and strong. So these things keep going on. And ECOWAS tried to use piecemeal sanctions by first of all shutting borders, excluding them from decision making bodies, and now trying to send the coup force to go and stop in this country. I, I, I'm sorry. This, these whole things feel like medicine after this. And even the medicine is not even tasteful enough to actually bring the dead back to life. It's simply not going to do anything. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Mbofung. The ECOWAS wanting to take on the security problems of uh, the region. Quite uh, a worry to Mr. Confidence. What about you? Absolutely. As I earlier stated, it is a worry for me because uh, we know, we are aware, we are conscious of the fact that um, the, the, the problems in, the, uh, in ECOWAS did not start two years ago. The, the long started, the jihadist movement have been dead. From mm -hmm. time in Moria, we have we have been depending on forces uh, from different countries to come mm -hmm. and then support ECOWAS in fighting these bodies. Mm -hmm. But now ECOWAS was there. What did they do? What now is ECOWAS bringing forth as a justification for them creating a body to handle their security just uh, two years after some some countries have experienced a coup d'état? Is it can, can, is it could there be a possibility that ECOWAS is trying to protect the interest of some selected individuals they call democratically elected people? That is a problem. That is what we should be looking at. So we cannot actually ascertain how strong or how effective or how efficient that body can be unless we know their context of operation and how they will operate. Because I've always said, and I'm still saying, that in Africa, the only thing which should be seen as a coup is something that goes against the interests of the people of Africa, not something that seeks to protect the interests of a selected few. Because every day, every moment, every second, we experience political coups that are taking place against our constitution. And these so-called bodies are quiet, they are silent, because they feel that a part of them, people that sit on the same table with them, are maybe protected. They don't want to look into it. So as far as this body is being created to still protect the interests of a few persons, then for me, the body is useless. Yes, we might appreciate it now. We might agree with them that it is loadable. But now, until we get their bone of contention and their uh, 
their bone of contention and their, uh, their, their modus operandi before mm -hmm. we actually have an understanding. Because for me, after having experienced what is going on in Mali, if ECOWAS is sending a body to Mali to go and insist that there's somebody like Asime Goita must return back power to the to to, to, to a civilian role meanwhile the people of uh, mali are, are, are appreciating his leadership then i'll think that that body is useless so the body is then maybe to 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 foster or to promote a post-colonial era that Mali is fighting to go against. So if to say that ECOWAS, according to uh, Aliu Touré, is trying to take over their defense, they should first of all convince the people of Africa how that their operations will protect the interests of the citizens that constitute that ECOWAS uh, environment. Because till now, I'm not yet convinced that they are trying to protect their, inter their territorial integrity. Because if they were actually trying to protect their in territorial integrity over the years that the jihadists the GRD, have been there, over the years that they have taken a part of some countries like uh, Mali, Niger, the Gulf of Guinea, they could have already created this. Or is it something they just wake up to it today? Absolutely not. So. In as much as we appreciate it, we are taking it with like a pinch of salt because we think that some things might come up that we don't know. And uh, we are in Africa. Anything can come up at any time. It's this same ECOWAS we have noticed that they have struggled to change their currency into the ECO. And then Alassane Ouattara got up one day and said that the ECO was simply going to replace the replace France CFA. Uh, mindless of what is happening to the CD, to the Naira and other currencies that are, mm -hmm. uh, that, that are being used in that same block. So when ECOWAS is coming up with uh, such a, an, a laudable uh, initiative, they should define to us how it will go. Shall we, should, will they get up one day and say that maybe this body that creating, maybe we'll go and then maybe form an alliance with the Bakene force to come back and then replace the same Bakene that uh, Mali has sent away? So those mm -hmm. are things they should we should look into them. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of initiative, but we must get how their modus operandi and the co what constitute their, their their mode of operation before we can appreciate it. Okay, talking about their modus operandi, we have these leaders who said that the the modalities of the planned regional force will be considered by the defense chiefs in the second half of 2023. Likewise, they said uh, that uh, the 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 funding will also be decided by the ECOWAS, but stressed that such an operation could not be solely dependent on voluntary contributions. That brings me now to ask, it will not depend on voluntary contributions. Of course, it needs to be maybe some standard uh, 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 contributions done by every member country. Now, we have a, 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 a viewer on the Facebook page who is like, he doesn't really believe in this this uh, project by the ECOWAS. As he says, they've not been able to fund little other institutions which they brought up. How much more of a security project are they going to be able to fund? So do you align with this viewer that the ECOWAS will not be able to maintain uh, this operation, especially financially, before even talking about maybe the collaboration and cooperation with external uh, 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 nations and forces? Absolutely, absolutely. The viewer has a point, which is which is which which is direct and it's a simple truth. We have seen that uh, when ECOWAS, the first thing we should know that there are lapses there is that ECOWAS is not a block that constitutes only of uh, of countries that fully enjoy their 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 independence. ECOWAS constitutes also of countries that are suffering from neo-colonial policies, which is one of the reasons that to date the the future of the ECO is still yet dangling on the scale, which we don't know if it will ever come to pass. So now, if they are giving authority to that, that the framework of this force shall be determined by the service, by the service, uh, by the, uh, service, uh, by the arm uh, service heads, then we also know that there are countries in the ECOWAS that before they take the decision, they might need to have a direct influence of their past colonial ma master. 
the, 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 their, their colonial masters might decide or might tell them that, okay, you cannot go to create a force without an approval, or if you are creating this force, it should be like a replacement to this particular force or a replacement to this particular guide we have been giving to you people, which obviously will go to destabilize it. So maybe this can also be creating another fertile ground for destability to come into the zone. So now, we don't actually in administration i don't think it makes sense to announce something before you go ahead to define the framework if to say that uh, Ture was announcing this already with a framework so that the people should receive it knowing that yes this is what has been worked upon then we can say that yes we are sure this thing can be implemented but now it has been announced and he is giving room for the service sets to go ahead and then discuss within the period of discussion there is a possibility of infiltration and once there is a possibility of in infiltration, remember we are talking about security, there is a tendency that it will never yield some kind of acceptable results. There was room. This meeting, the, 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 the ECOWAS annual summit came up. It, it is something that is in the uh, calendar of activities of, of ECOWAS. So absolutely, they were supposed to have maybe sent out communiques to the defense uh, chief of staffs of the ECOWAS country to maybe have a pre-conference or a pre-workshop to try to harness or to come out with how the, with a document that will guide their mode of operation of this task force. And when they come now in the General Assembly, they are proposing it. That is when we will know that, yes, maybe there is a kind of autonomy. But now when they have already come and announced it, there is a possibility of infiltration. Nobody will tell me that France was happy withdrawing their forces from Mali. And nobody will tell me that a decision that is taken about ECOWAS or is taken in the in the ECO in, in the ECOWAS blog. Meanwhile, Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso are excluded from the decision making table. It's aimed at protecting them. So I think that those are things that we should also be looking at when we are trying to an, uh, analyze how uh, the, the the defense uh, the, the the block defense system is going to work and benefit the people of ECOWAS. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mbofung. Let me join back uh, uh, Mr. Confidence McHarry. We are still looking at uh, this uh, collaboration and cooperation uh, between uh, these uh, African nations, particularly West African nations that are hit by security uh, 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 instability, talking of Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, and even Guinea, and others in the Sahel region. We now have uh, these nations that are having the presence of military bases from the, by the UN, France, and Russia. And at this point in time, we've been seeing how uh, uh, forces, security forces uh, from France have been rejected in most of these uh, uh, countries. And even uh, uh, UN forces are already receiving some backlash and the welcoming of Russian forces. How do you... Uh, Table, table this uh, uh, relationship between these uh, West African states, G5 Sahel nations, and these external or foreign countries which are bringing military aid and assistance to them. All right. So I, I would start by, first of all, um, dispelling the notion that ECOWAS did not try to, uh, or there was no uh, concerted ECOWAS uh, efforts to respond to the previous security situation in uh, the region. For instance, it was, it was in 2014 that the multinational joint task force was set up uh, by countries suffering from Boko Haram attacks to combat the insecurity in uh, Lake Chad Basin. We've also seen the G5 Sahel group uh, that was set up uh, about a year later you know, to prevent the insecurity from spreading to coastal countries such as Benin. For instance, uh, the G5 Sahel group was made up of uh, Niger, uh, the Benin Republic, Burkina Faso, Mali, and uh, I forgot the other one. So it wasn't like as if ECOWAS did not try to, but in terms of the standby force, uh, we have seen sequestered attempts to address the problem of insecurity and not just any kind of insecurity, but the threats that they had exposed. Uh, you know, to sovereign states. But to answer your question as to how uh, this thing is, this new plan is supposed to work in the presence of uh, foreign military 
on the West Africa region, if I get your question correctly. Uh, the, in the first place, we are currently seeing a French retreat in uh, places like Mali, for instance. And, you know, it's it first started with Operation Devan in 2013. And after that, Operation Bakan was launched between 2014 and 2015. And then in 2018, France launched Operation Takuba, uh, you know, which is much more of an European joint defense initiative to ensure security in the Sahel, much more than a French, a, a just a French solo effort, you know. So in the first place, Mali has done quite uh, a job of kicking the French out. But in the same place as kicking the French out, it has brought in another set of landlords, which is uh, Russia's Wagner Group. Now, for the Russian, for the Malian government, it would like citizens to believe that the Wagner Group is actually there to protect the citizens, you know, in their fight against Islamic terrorism to the north, in places like uh, uh, you know, northern Mali and the rest of that. But in actuality, that is exactly not what Wagner Group is there. So the Wagner Group is there in Mali for two purposes. The first one is for regime security purposes, and the second is for resource extraction in places where it could easily get minerals such as diamond, gold, and sell it on the black market. It simply is not there to protect anybody. And how this plan is supposed to exist side by side with the presence of foreign military troops on the continent. I, I think that question has been answered in part when about two weeks ago, the uh, UK's, UK's defense minister announced that the UK will be supporting a joint African-led initiative to combat terrorism on the Sahel. So you could see that on one hand, the ECOWAS is still leaning heavily to the West, but instead of leaning to the traditional power, which of course has been on the continent for as long as I can remember, which is France, they started to welcome in officially, we, we, and, and let me use officially in, in very strong language, is trying to officially welcome a new partner, which is Britain. But the problem is Britain might not have the kind of connections and the experience that the French already has in dealing with insecurity in the Sahel. But on the other hand, the, uh, the West African leaders have not said anything unique that is in direct challenge to Mali's uh, welcoming of Russia's Wagner Group. And you could tie this simply to uh, uh, African leaders and their relations with, with Moscow. And, you know, they are, not in, in, they are not on terrible relations with the East. And, you know, so it, it is not in their interest, of course, economic and political interest, you know, to, to, to say anything about this, even though the Kremlin has tried to severely deny that the Wagner Group does not have any direct link to the Russian government. That it's a private military company, but we all know that that, that is that is too few and far between. So as to how this plan is supposed to exist side by side with uh, the existing military presence on the continent, in the first place, it is going to bring up a lot of issues in, in terms of how the West views the East, because one of the key complaints the French has been having is that the presence of Russian uh, mercenaries in the sub-region threatens French military operations. It also threatens French uh, security interests, and as a result, those kind of things cannot coexist side by side, and this is one of the key reasons why France left. So, but for the British, I do not see the British committing as much troops as the French did. So that should not necessarily be that much of a problem. So it now behoves West African, West African leaders on how they reconcile these differences and try to manage uh, uh, the, the, the efforts that they want to put into uh, this anti-coup force. But I do think that going forward, in as much as the Wagner group is not in direct combat with jihadist groups in places like Mali, Burkina Faso, and the rest, I do think that if it gets over its anglophone and francophone divide in the ECOWAS parliament, it can actually do a whole lot more in making headways in these countries. Uh, it, but but it, it now depends on how the francophone countries actually take such involvement as not necessarily a violation of their own uh, sovereignty, but as a necessary evil. Okay, thank you. Just stay with me. We are still looking at this particular security and talking about these uh, 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 Junta Road nations. Let's go particularly now with uh, uh, Mali, which is uh, in hold of 46 Ivorian uh, uh, military personnel or troops since July, accusing them of invading or trespassing on their territory. 
And we have the United Nations and the international community and the ECOWAS who have been calling for the release of these troops, but to no avail. What or uh, who can really speak out now to these uh, 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 Mali's ruling daughter and the listen? Because they seem to already be, uh, out, to be getting out of hand, like not to be able to be controlled by anybody. Is there any means or any way by which any of this international community or uh, security peacekeeping forces can be able to speak out to Mali? And also, just adding to the same question, what do you think of the decision by the ruling junta to take on uh, uh, the arrest of these uh, military personnel? Yeah, okay, so so I will, I will begin by answering that question, by answering the second question. The decision of the uh, junta in arresting these uh, the soldiers have not been clearly defined. They accused the soldiers of espionage, but we do know that the arrest was in uh, the in, in, in connection with uh, the, the UN peacekeeping operations in Mali because the soldiers claim to be uh, manual laborers on behalf of the on behalf of MINUSMA, but uh, the junta's decision to arrest them is in can be framed around the geopolitical competition with France, uh, because in the first place, uh, France and Mali, of course, as we've talked extensively about them, are not on good terms, and the Malian junta see Ivory Coast as an extension of France Africa, uh, you know, France uh, France's policy in Africa, and so the foot soldiers that naturally are supposed to be working for the uh, for the United Nations mission in Mali are now caught up in the conflict Mali is supposed to have with France. And as a result, uh, the, 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 key the, the inability of Ivory Coast to get them out is very, very telling. And among everything, what it tells, it's a question of the divisions that are currently existing in France and Africa that used to be a whole block that is controlled from Paris. But now these divisions are coming to the fore with the pullout of Guinea, with the pullout of Mali. Uh, it, it, it would be really difficult for them to have a consensus in ECOWAS like they used to have uh, in the past. But to answer the question of who exactly can talk to Mali to get those soldiers out, it's simple. He who pays the piper dictates the tune. So the key person that Mali listens to, or the Malian junta listens to right now, is in Moscow. So if the Russian government gets involved, it's going to go a long way in getting those soldiers out. But the problem is that France itself does not want to talk to Russia because of uh, what it considers as its rivalry in, in the Sahel. And as a result, Ivory Coast is also not taking the initiative to get international cooperation to get the soldiers out. So I, I do think that the people who provide regime security duties for Colonel Asimi Goita have been the best place to pressure him to do the right thing by releasing the soldiers. Thank you. Uh... Mark Harry, let me join Javans. Now, at this point in time, we equally have, uh, we equally have in Burkina Faso, where the government has has banned the RFE Radio France International uh, from its territory for propaganda, and uh, we we notice most of these foreign media having some uh, kind of influence and carrying out some propaganda. So, how do you justify? Uh, uh, or appreciate, I should say, the decision by Burkina Faso government to ban RFE in its country? Uh, actually, uh, Burkina Faso, though it is being leaded by uh, by what some people call a junta or by a military government, I believe has just one objective, and that objective is protecting the territorial integrity Definitely. of the state and protecting the interests of the citizens, irrespective of how we judge it, irrespective of how we analyze it, and irrespective of how any external force sees it. And we know the role the media plays in terms of cases of crisis, we know the role the media plays in terms of uh, propaganda, the role the media plays in terms of either escalating or de-escalating de the crisis. So if to say that the government of uh, 
Burkina Faso has seen that maybe uh, something or oh, a content, something was published or being read over RFI, which maybe seeks to undermine the autonomy of the country or seems to put the country in a state of jeopardy or seeks to put the, the, the country in a state of chaos. It is their right to ban uh, R, R, uh, RFI because I believe that before uh, they get to operate within the territory, uh, the territory of Burkina Faso, they had rules and regulations that were stated that is supposed to guide them. But now we have always come to know, those of us that are from uh, France, uh, French African countries, we have always seen the rules of the French men, um, the French media in uh, reporting issues that concerns uh, concerns Africa as far as their interest is being is being threatened. We even read on some papers uh, some some months back just before the the the, the World Cup that. Uh, a French uh, uh, media agency was reporting how Cameroon is going to fortify themselves with a traditional doctor, which to some people can be interpreted as contempt or maybe as trying to undermine uh, the Cameroonians, which can go to a level of giving the, the leaders of the country, maybe taking sanctions or calling the media house uh, to, uh, to, uh, to order. So if to say that Burkina Faso discover that the uh, RFI is trying to undermine them or escalate the, the tension they already have in the country and they say that to protect the, 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 their territorial integrity and also to protect the citizens, the best thing for them to do is to ban RFI, then there is no problem with that. Uh, the end of the program. So now at this point in time, uh, what do you say or what can you uh, uh, say to encourage maybe these uh, uh, officials of uh, the, the, the economic community of West African states on how to go about it with this new initiative, which of course they are very certain and very determined to, to, to carry on as from the second half of 2023, Mr. Javans. The first thing I can say is that um, ECOWAS should, ECOWAS and likewise any other block in Africa that is intending to create a, a, a block defense uh, army or a block defense force should understand one thing. There are basic things they need to do to develop a regional security and a governance system that will protect their citizens, who protect their territory. And they should understand something. Security is of ultimate importance. Security is extremely important. We borrow a lot and we invest in sectors that gives room for uh, we, we invest in sectors that gives room for a lot of corruption and uh, maybe theft in public in, in the public uh, domain. So now if we are we want to take security in, uh, we, we want to accord security the important security de uh, uh, deserves. The first thing we should do is we should understand that as we have the labor force, we can employ the best servicemen, we can give them the best of training, and we can actually fund them to protect us, to guide us towards a stable uh, a stable block as far as security is concerned. So as far as uh, ECOWAS is looking forward to that, they should be looking at realistic reforms that they will put in place that will bring them at the limelight of achieving stability, achieving security. And above all, the first thing each and every block of Africa should always look at should not only be a military takeover, it should be the constitutional coups that uh, democratically democratically elected leaders carry on against the people. They should understand that once you are elected and you, you swear to protect the constitution, or you swear to protect the interests of the people. Once you divert from that, you are already uh, you you are already a coup leader. In fact, they, they can start addressing you a junta leader. Not only the militaries because the military use arms. No, there are a lot of coups that goes ahead, and that goes a long way to destabilize the security of uh, Africa as a whole. Thank you, Mr. Bofum Javans, for that take. Let me hear from. Mr. Confidence Mark Harry, uh, uh, we, we let's know. Let me know from you. We have Mali's uh, ruling uh, junta, which 
has disrespected its promise or has not uh, uh, honored its word of living power after 18 months. And we know as at now the ruling junta aims at handing over power in 2024. And nobody seems to be able to do anything about it at this point in time how do you think things are supposed to be carried on about because if they actually honor this handover by 2024 then it means they would have been in power for three and a half years yeah um to start with there are no easy answers to reverse this course ECOWAS, to my understanding have exhausted every one of its possible sanctions to sanction Mali to get them back on the path of democracy, but it simply has not worked. So ECOWAS right now is depending on the strategy of wait and see, and unfortunately, given the Malian regime, the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so what they are doing right now is to simply wait it out until 2024 to see if this is possible. But if you look around, Mali is in a very, very dire difficulty. We saw the same promise that was given by uh, the, current, the young uh, leader in Chad, that's at this Kakatebi Junior who promised that he was going to hand over power to the Constituent Assembly and leave office within a record time. But as at last month, he has tried to push himself in power by letting go of the Prime Minister that was put in place and several other checks on the, on the executive powers he eroded. And as a result, he also got uh, support from France. Uh, so they simply cannot trust the word of somebody who already has power, and not just any kind of power, but power through the barrel of the gun. So, uh, what would happen in 2024 remains to be seen. If I am to make a wild guess, I would I would believe that the first instance is for the regime to, you know, postpone the date of which it was supposed to hand over power in February 2024. And not only that, if it eventually comes to if if, if, if the handover eventually comes to pass, that many of the regime's officials, especially Colonel Sebi Goita, is going to try to remain in power by democratic means. And in that way, it's ECOWAS that is ECOWAS is only getting its its its, its recommended uh, solution by half measure. So, um, so uh, to pivot to the original question, I don't exactly see what other powers they have because uh, the Malians are taking this uh, these sanctions and this isolation in good stride, and they are making the most out of it uh, because they are not only not listening to ECOWAS, they are not listening to their former international partners, they are not listening to the United Nations, they are not listening to the UN itself. And the only person they tend to listen to is the people giving them, uh, you know, security order from Moscow. So it's on the wait and see of um, a mission. And to, to conclude, I do think that some of the questions we should be asking right now is how ECOWAS proposed plan to send coup, uh, uh, a coup force of made of military uh, uh, super fighting force from drawn from the region is going to stop the coup d'etat that are actually going on in the countries that are experiencing coup that's talking about Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Mali. Is it going to go right into those countries to remove the, the leaders of those countries, or is it going to simply adopt with that see approach to see that the or to to, to see that the, the the presence of the standby uh, uh, force on the sub region is simply going to do its intended bit by the terrain coup on the continent? I think I think that's one of the key questions we are going to be asking going forward. Yeah, talking about the, the, the key questions, we've been asking these questions on and on because today is not, this is not the first time, like we said, these military coups have taken place for over two years now that this military junta has been in place. And we've been having uh, these uh, uh, regional bodies sending uh, 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 mercenaries, sending mediators to, 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 to collaborate with these persons. And at some point in time, we equally have analysts who say uh, that they cannot actually get into the country and pull these uh, military junta's out of seat. It will be an interference into the country's uh, uh, sovereignty. So we keep on asking these questions over and over again, and that's why we are out here today wanting to know what best strategy the ECOWAS is going to employ at this point in time to be able to sort out issues of uh, 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 coup d'etats in most of these African countries. So thank you very much, Mr. Confidence Makari. And we are hoping that in the days ahead, in the times, uh, talking can never end. We, and we, we, we expect to be able to lay impacts 
with what the, the, the points and analysis that you people bring up on the Pan-African television. So thank you very much for honoring today's edition. Mr. Confidence McHarry, you are a security expert with SBM Intelligence from Lagos. Thank you very much for honoring this invitation today. Thank you very much for having me also. We equally had, we equally had uh, Mr. Mbofung, Mr. Mbofung Javans, uh, thank you very much. You are a political analyst. Thanks for being on the panel this afternoon. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, televiewers. Thank you, our director, for the program. And uh, we keep employing that you trust your Pan-African televisions for we have most of these kind of interesting topics that are going to enable us to move ahead with proper solutions for the problems that are affecting the continent at large. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Appreciate it. I very appreciate all what you are talking about it. Good day and good day to us, the viewers of our free media. Thank you. Appreciate it. I very appreciate all what you are Talking about it. Good day and good day to us, the viewers of our free media. Thank you. Thank you.